trekking up the mountain in search of the Susi group of mountain gorillas. They were named after a local river and total 38 animals. It's tough going. This group was seen yesterday at a height of about 9,000 feet, an elevation gain of more than 2,000 feet from our starting point. Trackers left early in the morning to find the new location of the group. Although gorillas are on the move all day, they don't go very far, foraging for food along the way. The mountain is covered in mist, and some rain is inevitable up this high. Our guide told us that we were very close now. Wow! This is an incredible experience. The Susa group is one of eight groups here in Rwanda, all habituated to the presence of humans, allowing us the opportunity to observe them in their natural environment. Now that's an impressive entrance. He's Kurira, the dominant silverback. There are three other silverbacks in this group. Gorillas maintain a strict hierarchy, and a silverback low in status may live to form his own group. Males reach silverback status at the age of 12. That's Muganga and her new baby, which looks to be only a few months old. For the three to four years that the baby stays with its mother, it will learn which foods to eat, social and sexual behavior. Mothers care for their babies with great affection, patience, and playfulness. Gorillas eat some 200 types of leaves, tubers, flowers, fruit, fungus, and some insects. Favorite foods include bamboo, thistles, and wild celery. They do not drink water, obtaining moisture from the foliage they consume. Poppy is the oldest female in this group. She was named by Diane Fossey 25 years ago when she was studying the Rwanda gorillas. It was through the efforts of this courageous primatologist that these magnificent animals are still around for us to see. That's Getty, a curious juvenile. Each gorilla has a unique nose print which allows for individual identification. Watching them for a while brings out their individual personalities. When leopards roam this region, Gorillas slept in trees. Now they nest on the ground, finding a different location each night. Young ones still find the trees to be a wonderful play area. After a night in Entebbe, we traveled south by safari vehicle to Lake Maboro National Park to film birds, zebras, impala, and other grazing animals. Then we crossed the border into Rwanda, making three treks to view mountain gorillas and one to see the elusive golden monkey. Crossing back into Uganda, we entered the windy, impenetrable forest, home to another group of mountain gorillas located just north of the Virunga mountain range. Next stop was the magnificent Queen Elizabeth National Park, home to elephants, lions, leopards, hippos, buffalo, 
all the wonderful animals associated with the African continent. Just north is Kabali National Park, home to a large group of chimpanzees, who sometimes tolerated our intrusion into their morning routines. After a full day's drive on unpaved roads, we reached Murchison Falls National Park, located on the Nile River. The main attractions here are the massive Nile crocodiles and hippos that line its banks. In all, we traveled more than 2,000 miles, mostly on unpaved and poorly maintained roads. A magnificent adventure. We stayed at a variety of lodges during the 24 days we spent in Uganda and Rwanda, ranging from simple tented camps with no running water and minimal solid-powered lighting to more substantial resorts. One of our favorites was Virunga Lodge, located high in the hills about one hour from Volcanoes National Park in Rwanda. Toilets are simple, but functional, and showers are ordered one hour in advance, allowing the staff to fill our bucket with hot water. entering Lake Maboro National Park, we were greeted by a small herd of zebra. Several varieties of antelope make up the bulk of the grazing animals in all the game parks we visited. So we grouped them in order to see their similarities and differences. The Oribi is the smallest of Uganda's antelope, measuring only 20 to 30 inches at the shoulder. The Ugandan cob is the most populous of the antelopes and was found in all the game parks we visited. It is similar to the impala, but does not have the black stripe that appears on the back of each thigh. Female impalas form herds of 10 to 50 or more and wander in and out of male territories. If they start to leave the territory, the male tries to herd them back to the center. The heart of beast gets its name from the heart-shaped space between its horns. Although not quite as large as its relative, the heart of beast, the topi has a similar body shape. Both sexes in both species have thick, heavily ringed horns. The waterbuck is a beautiful animal. Despite its name, it is not truly aquatic, nor much at home in the water or swamps. It does, however, take refuge there to escape predators. At the time of Dianophosi, they were giving the identification of the groups in the numbers depending to which group you have seen first. This group has 18 individuals. And this group. We are at the park headquarters listening to our guide Francis describe Group 13, the gorilla group we hope to see this morning. There is only one silverback in this group of 18 gorillas, a rather unique situation. His name is Agashaya. He is very gentle and seems to attract lots of females. But in most cases, a group which has more than one silverback is the one that has chances than the one who is going to get females. Because they can be interested in these other silverbacks, but they came up in his group.
But when they come to our way, we'll be moving backwards. And it's more to the babies. The babies are most cases for them, they're curious. They could keep on wanting to come across us. Francis is advising us not to touch the gorillas, even if they come to us. They share 95% of our genes and are susceptible to many of our diseases. Anyone with a cold or other communicable illness cannot make the trek. Oh my, showing off for the audience, we are so fortunate to be here. Each person paid $375 for the privilege of spending one hour with the gorillas. And we had to book our permits almost one year in advance. There are only 720 mountain gorillas in the world, divided among Rwanda, Uganda, and Congo. In Tongo, a mature female appears to be pregnant. Females can conceive at about the age of 10 and generally raise four to six children in their 40 to 45 years of life. Gestation is nine months, like humans, and only one baby is born each pregnancy. Twins are exceedingly rare. <laughs> Gorillas are the largest and most powerful of the apes. Adult males reach an average height of four to five feet and weigh from 300 to 500 pounds. Females are smaller, but both are tremendously powerful possessing the ability to tear branches from bushes and uproot small trees. They spend their days quietly, either in a leisurely search for food or relaxing in a social setting. Agashaya is the only silverback in this group. Male gorillas will not mate with their siblings or offspring, hence the need for other silverbacks. A typical group this size would have one or two additional mature silverbacks. Sometimes females will seek out other groups or males will join this group, preventing inbreeding. The next day, we trekked up the mountain to the Sabino group, consisting of 10 gorillas. The park service provided a sheet showing pictures of all the gorillas in each group so that we could identify them by their distinctive nose prints. The dominant silverback is Gohondra. There is a second silverback in the group named Riango. This is clearly breakfast time. Gorillas sleep about 13 hours each night and rest for several hours at midday. They build new sleeping nests every night by bending nearby plants into a springy platform, usually on the ground or in low trees. When not resting, they spend most of their time looking for food. Gorillas are generally quiet, 
They are not physically capable of making the same sounds as humans. However, they do generate about 25 distinct noises, including hoots, screams, high-pitched barks and grunts, which our guides learn to imitate. Our guide is explaining that gorillas rarely drink water, getting all the moisture they need from plants. This juvenile probably saw his reflection in the water and decided to sample it. Our hour is up, and it's time to leave the Sabino group and the gorillas of Rwanda. So what did you think of the gorillas? They were great. It was, uh, we were looking at one, and my wife said, stop. And I thought she was going to take my picture. I didn't realize there was a little gorilla right behind me, like within a, a foot or two. It's wonderful. It was fantastic. You can't describe it from reading it in a book. To see them in this environment is just out of the world. Love it. Late in the afternoon, a group of teenagers from the local village school came to our lodge to entertain us with traditional dancing. What a treat and a wonderful ending to our time in Rwanda. Rwanda experienced one of the worst atrocities in the 20th century, the 1994 genocide that left more than a million people dead. Memorials dot the countryside. It's time to leave the mountain of the gorillas and head north to Uganda. The countryside is rich with vegetable farms, sculpted from the side of steep hills. This is a beautiful part of Africa. All the work is done by hand in the nutrient-rich soil formed by volcanic eruptions many years ago. We are leaving the Virunga mountain range, located at the junction of Congo, Rwanda, and Uganda. We are heading north to Uganda on one of the few paved roads encountered during our journey. Our destination is the Bwindi Impenetrable Forest, a rather accurate description of the terrain we will encounter while trekking to the gorillas. Unfortunately, we cannot show footage of the steep foliage-covered trails leading up to the gorillas. We needed both hands to make it up the ridge, an exhausting two-hour climb in hot sun. Although there were several gorillas around us, the dense foliage made filming very difficult. A classic pose.
So lucky, Peggy, the leopard, moving. It's very, very difficult to see them here in Queen Elizabeth, but I will say we are fortunate. We have seen them. Uh, you can see the baby uh, about two to three months, but the other one is the mother. These ones, in fact, they are just like about two and a half years because if you look at the male, you find that there is some hair starting to grow on the ears. So normally they grow the men when they are about two and a half years. And from there, the men continuously grow until they get that big black band. This one has not had any permanent male which is staying with them because sometimes they were fighting with the other pride which has the male. So when they could meet, they fight and you find that that's why some of these ones are having sort of scars on their bodies. This lioness has hidden her cubs and is off looking for game. Lions may hunt at any hour, but they typically go after large prey at night, hunting together to increase their success rate. Some prey can be difficult to catch and can outrun a single lion. This lioness's cubs must be very young for her to be out hunting alone during the day. The giraffe has a distinctive walking gait, moving both legs on one side forward at the same time. At a gallop, however, it can reach speeds of 35 miles an hour. They occasionally eat grass, fruits, and shrubs, but their principal food source is the acacia tree. The tree's sharp thorns do not seem to stop the giraffe which has a long muscular tongue especially adapted to select, gather, and pluck foliage. The elephant is the only surviving species of what was, in prehistoric times, a diverse and populous group of large mammals. Of all its specialized features, the muscular trunk is the most remarkable. It serves as a nose, a hand, an extra foot, a signaling device, and a tool for gathering food. This one has been tagged as part of a research project. Usually only one calf is born to a pregnant female. Elephants are very attentive mothers and because most elephant behavior has to be learned, they keep their offspring with them for many years. Buffaloes have earned a bad reputation from hunters and other people who come in close contact with them. They are unpredictable and can be dangerous if cornered or wounded. They generally live near water and spend most of the time grazing. Grass forms the greatest part of the Cape Buffalo's diet. Neither graceful nor beautiful, warthogs are nonetheless remarkable animals. They are the only pigs able to live without water for several months of the year. They seem to have taken up residence at our lodge in Queen Elizabeth National Park.
The alpha chimp is calling his troop, and the chimpanzees are leaving the area. Kabali National Park is a primatologist's dream, hosting many monkeys and a population of more than 1,000 chimpanzees, of which one community of 80 has been habituated to humans. Let's try to follow them. Unlike the gorillas, however, the chimps barely tolerate our presence, spending most of the time high in the trees. Chimps touch each other a great deal and often appear to kiss when they meet. They also hold hands and groom each other. Chimpanzees are omnivores, eating a wide variety of foods that include fruits, nuts, seeds, and insects. Occasionally, they hunt and eat meat. Chimpanzees have opposing thumbs on their feet as well as their hands, essentially providing them with four hands. Chimps are agile climbers, building nests high up in the trees to rest in during the day and to sleep in at night. They construct new nests in minutes by intertwining branches to form a platform. Much smaller than a gorilla, mature males weigh in at 90 to 120 pounds, with females just slightly lighter. They are endangered, with habitat loss, hunting, and commercial exploitation reducing their number to about 100,000 animals, located in nine African countries. That one, that chimp that uh, was seated there, the old one like me here, is called <laughs> Kaguta. And Kaguta is a name of our father's president. And he also uses that name. He's called Kaguta Museven Yoweri. This region is called the primate capital of the world, prompting the International Primatological Society to hold its conference in Entebbe this year. So let's take a look at some of the other primates that inhabit this area, starting with a rare find, the golden monkey. The golden monkey is an endangered species, with a few thousand thought to exist only in this part of Africa, the Virunga mountain range. We have trekked to the Kabatwa troop, comprising a few dozen animals, and we're fortunate in getting great footage of these elusive monkeys. They spend a good part of the day foraging for food. You need a good lens and tripod to get a close look at these beautiful monkeys. Of all the primates in East Africa, baboons most frequently interact with people. Intelligent and crafty, they can be agricultural pests, making humans their only predator. Baboons usually leave their sleeping places around 7 or 8 in the morning. After coming down from the cliffs or trees, adults sit in small groups grooming each other while the juveniles play. Grass makes up a large part of their diet, along with berries, seeds, and a variety of plants. Baboons also eat insects in small quantities of meat. Lucky timing. Tended by its proud parents, this baby black and white colobus monkey is only a few days old. The newborn monkey is covered with white fur, gradually gaining the black and white adult coloration at about three months.
Many people come to Uganda to photograph the abundant bird life. Although that was not our focus, we got a few good shots. We are in Murchison Falls National Park, crossing the Nile River by ferry boat. Our hotel, the Para Lodge, is on the north side of the river. The river, called the Uganda Nile here, runs west from its source at the top of Lake Victoria through Murchison Falls and up into the Sudan, where it is called the White Nile. At the ancient city of Khartoum, it merges with the Blue Nile blowing up through a series of cataracts into Egypt. After a journey of more than 4,000 miles, it reaches its destination, the Mediterranean Sea. We'll spend three days here, filming wildlife in the river and in the game park, before returning to Entebbe and our flight home. We are cruising on the longest river in the world and a source of irrigation for crops that dates back at least 6,000 years. It is teeming with life and we are in awe just to be here. Elephants, buffalo, crocodiles, hippos and a myriad of water birds line the banks of the Nile just waiting for our camera lens. This elephant, however, is not happy with the loud sound of our engine and lets us know that we are intruding. The hippopotamus is a massive animal, weighing up to 7,000 pounds. Yet it is quite agile, both on land and in the water. Hippos rarely swim. Due to their specific gravity, they can sink in water and literally walk or run along the bottom. Considered to be among the most dangerous of the African animals, they are highly aggressive and have little fear of humans. Our guide described this as an albino hippo, but I think it just has light coloration. Female hippos give birth to a single calf, which can weigh more than 100 pounds. Although the baby can only hold his breath for about 30 seconds, nursing takes place underwater. Hippos are vegetarians and generally come out of the water in the evening to graze on the grasses that line the river. 
often wandering several miles inland. This one is certainly eating, but I'm not sure he can get much sustenance from the short grass outside our lodge. This is not the place for an afternoon swim. Weighing in at 2,000 pounds and up to 21 feet in length, the Nile crocodile is a huge prehistoric animal. It has changed little in the past 65 million years. They have a lifespan of 70 to 100 years. They are not solitary predators, but social creatures. Cows protect not only their hatchling young, but offspring from the previous year. They convey social messages with motions, odors, postures, and sounds, producing at least six different vocal signals. Both cow and bull maintain territories, especially during breeding season. We are at the top of Murchison Falls, marking the beginning of the Uganda Nile and the end of our journey. This was a wonderful adventure, not only for the privilege of spending time with the gorillas and other animals, but for the interaction with the warm and friendly people of Uganda and Rwanda. At about half the size of California, Uganda has substantial natural resources, including fertile soils and sizable mineral deposits. Agriculture, however, is the most important sector of the economy, employing over 80% of the workforce. Coffee accounts for the bulk of export revenues for this country of 25 million people. Special thanks go to the late Diane Fossey, who started her research in Rwanda in 1967 and lived there for 18 years until her untimely death in December 1985. She earned the trust of the gorillas and was the first person to habituate them to humans. Without her pioneering work, this film would not be possible.